Good morning, everyone. Um, today we are going to work on our bread, on our dough. So this is the fun part. I've got my starter, which I fed yesterday, so did you. It even more than doubled itself. Let's see, it's even more than doubled itself. You see all these nice little bubbles around here. That's the gas is forming up, which is pushing our starter up. And now I'm going to do a flow test. And if that's going to go okay, I'm going to start mixing my bread. So I have some water here. And I'm gonna scoop out just a little bit from the side here. It feels like fluffy marshmallow. I see all the gluten strings in there. And I'm gonna gently drop it in the water. Great, it's floating. That means that I can start using my starter now. I already know a lot about my starter because yesterday we did everything together. So I'm gonna put this aside. Now what I'm gonna do at first, um, you can start mixing in a bowl, if that's more convenient. For the first part of today's stretch and fold, I like to do that in a plastic container like this. And, um, the reason I like to do that is just because I like just to see the dough develop from the side and see what's happening with it. But you definitely don't have to do that. So in here, I'm going to uh, put my starter. And we are going to use 23 grams of starter. zeroed out my scale. I'm going to scoop some starter here. Nice and stretchy. Good. That's 22. It should be about like a heaping tablespoon, but of course, always measure. Okay, it says 24 now. That's okay. I'm not going to if it's one more, I never argue. The more starter we put in our bread, the faster the development of the bread during the day. We are using really a little bit of starter right now because we are going to really see how the bread develops. We want to give it its time because we're learning today. Um, but also I feel the longer the bread develops, um, the deeper the flavor is. So there's much more depth uh, to the flavor. It's... Uh, yeah, you can really control control it more, but you'll see after we do this recipe today, which is really a beginner's recipe, and you'll get the hang of it, then you can try, you know, doing different things with it. So adding more starter or more water. But for now, this is our beginner's recipe. So uh, we're going to add the water now. We're adding 360 grams of water. This is just normal tap water. It can be cold, it can be room temp. But don't make it too warm. We don't want to kill our starter. Three hundred and sixty one. That's good for me. I'm gonna lightly loosen my starter in the bowl. Let's swim around. See, it's not even, it still wants to float because it's really at its peak right now. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to add my flour, 590 grams of flour. Don't forget to zero out your scale. Don't leave any spoons in there and then zero it out and take it out because I will mess with your weight. 590. 
So this will make one good loaf. Perfect. That's 590. And now I'm going to add uh, some salt. I like to add 15 grams of salt, but it's really depending on your personal preference. I'm gonna zero out my scale. But then I suggest you start with 15. And um, if you like more, you can just add more later. That's it basically. That's all that I need for my dough. Water, flour, salt. And my starter, which is basically also just flour and water. So what I'm gonna do now is start, uh, just do a light mix together with this uh, long teaspoon that I have here just to start getting everything together and then I'm gonna get my hand in there um, some recipes will tell you that it's better to first mix the water and the flour let it rest and only after an hour add your starter and your salt or some will say add a starter at the beginning with the flour and the water and later just add the salt. Um, I don't think it makes such a big difference in this recipe. So because we're doing a really a beginner's recipe, the way that this recipe is designed is to first of all handle any kind of flour. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a strong bread flour, uh, but also it can handle uh, yeah, the different kind of variables that are just easier to start with and don't make the process even more complicated than it is. Um, but during the stretch and folds and the growth of the dough during the day, which is called the bulk fermentation, I am going to show you some tics, tricks and tips that are not on my blog. I think those will be useful for you going forward. Okay, my dough has kind of come together. It's still very clumpy. What I'm gonna do right now is just um, actually wet my hands. And we're gonna be working with the dough today, most of the time, with lightly wet hands. And now what I'm just going to do is kind of knead it together. But my purpose here is not really to knead it because we are going to work on this dough the whole day. So we're gonna stretch and fold it in various ways in various times. But I do want the flour to soak up all the um, water in here. So I don't wanna have any dry patches. And your toe is going to be very stiff right now, very hard, a bit sticky, but don't be afraid of sticky dough, it's fine, you know? We're gonna, that's why we're working with wet hands, so it's less sticky. And you can definitely wet your hand a little bit more. I have a bowl of water here next to me. Okay, that's it really, you know, everything came together. I'm gonna scrape off everything else here on my hand. All that goodness will go into my bread. And that's it. I'm gonna leave it right now for anywhere between 30 minutes and 60 minutes. It depends a little bit on the temperature in your home, but it's not really crucial. Even if it's gonna take you an hour and a half to attempt it, it's still going to be fine. Very important to close it. Um, and yeah, I'm going to send you another video within about, within the next hour and try to notice how different your dough is next time we treat it. Good luck.